All right. Um, I just basically put together some uh, PowerPoint slides of some presentations that we've done to other uh, groups to uh, encourage uh, students to participate in the CBE model uh, at Sinclair College. So this is something that uh, I've done. Uh, Mary Benedict, who was our old project coordinator, Jessica Stump, who's our admissions uh, coordinator, um, and then of course Nancy does at the major uh, consortiums and meetings that she goes to. So this is basically um, a very big overview. Now, if there's any questions that you have or something that you want to cover on an in-depth basis, just write it down uh, and we can cover over it more uh, specifically at another time because as I was doing this, I was just wondering like, what do you already know and what you don't know? I was telling Gretchen, there was things that we had already known and when Western governors came in, it was just like, oh, no, we already know this, you know, and this doesn't pertain to us and it was kind of, you were there, but you didn't, you were, the, you were there physically, but you weren't processing nothing, you weren't listening. So I didn't want to be that part of the presentation while I was going over things that I thought was important, that you, that's not part of your model or not part of what you're going to, that you're looking at. So that's why I'm just going to do a brief overview for the time I have and then open it up for questions at the end. And then um, if there's anything later on that we need to kind of dwell on, then we can kind of um, uh, use. So I'm going to go over the, the model and the grant. And, um, what our definition that, that we use, and then what our components are, and then how we're going to sustain it and scale it, make it grow. So basically we already have an online model. We already have online. We've been teaching since 2006, do, teaching online courses. So it wasn't like we were inventing anything, okay? We already had the online model. So basically what we did was looking at our, we have what they call e-learning or distance learning, and then that we've been using since uh, Nancy left the uh, chair of the CIS department and went down to be the dean of distance learning. And from there, she is over the delivery. She has the instructional designers. We have a complete media department, like the, camera, the cameras that we have here, uh, Adobe server, um, uh, Adobe Studio, they can videotape, they can do just about anything. They train, we train all faculty in, in delivering online, and now we deliver, and we do training for the CBE. Um, we do online courses, we, t we have an online course that teaches the students how to navigate the LMS, uh, how to succeed in online, we call it uh, student success in online learning. We have online student support, um, so we have a person that basically handles students in other states, and I think uh, Sinclair has a, some kind of like a reciprocity agreement for like 42 of the 50 states. So uh, the course is then accepted in other states. And then we have a student support center of about five or six people that handle just the online uh, portion of the, uh, of the degrees. And then, um, um, and then the different re, uh, um, uh, section capacity. I don't know what she put. I don't know why I put that down. I think I forgot to finish typing that out. So I have to apologize for that. So here I'm just not going to go through. But here's our online model. Okay. So we have a faculty team and the web course development team and we develop master courses. So they can be new courses, they could be rewritten courses. In our college, we have course coordinators. So like on the Cisco, I'm the course coordinator. I have other faculty members under me, but it's my job to maintain the master courses and the repository courses and make sure that they're lined up per state of Ohio and per uh, Cisco. And then shows on there, we recruit faculty, human resources, when we need to t hire adjuncts, you know, to teach these online courses. And what they do is basically uh, recruit within the high schools. So um, we've gotten it approved through the educational associations, 
you know, the teachers union, so that they can be paid both as a, a as a St. Clair instructor, adjunct instructor, and in their full-time job. Okay, that had to be put into some of the contract languages. Okay, so we do that. The chairs and distance learning need to approve the faculty, so they have to meet some requirements. They have to have, um, and they have to have a bachelor's degree, adjuncts. At this point in time, and we're fighting it because the state wants everybody to have a master's degree, but if uh, the current administration is starting to back away from that because of um, uh, too many students are leaving the state. Okay. Um, um, and then whatever certification the faculty have to have. <clears throat> I don't know here, but like, um, any course I teach, I have to be certified in. If there's a certification test, I have to have it. So when I teach VMware, I have to be, uh, uh, was it VCP, Dash, whatever those initials, I don't even put them on there. I teach Juniper, I have to have the Juniper. When I teach Extreme, I have to have the Extreme. And it's just part of their requirement, okay? And then, we, then everybody's put in a pool, and then as courses become available, you can pick from those pools. There is no seniority at St. Clair, so if this is a good instructor, good instructor, and not so great, we can then start moving those two. You know, you kind of pick who you want to have teach your courses. There's no, there is no contract or requirement who you pick. Um, market research, I don't, we don't get that much marketing. Our marketing department consists of two people, so it's not like they can tell you exactly what, it, what the whole college needs for each department. What we do have is what we used to call advisory meetings, which now they're called business industry and leadership training meetings, okay, built. Okay, it's based upon the National Convergence Center out of Collin College in Texas. And basically, they tell us what they need. And then we implement those through uh, outcomes and objectives, through skills, knowledges, and assessments, and so on and so forth. Do periodic reviews, and those are done for most of us, uh, for the course coordinators, I do them, usually do them during the summer. It's usually a lighter time, like I'm teaching two classes, so um, I can go through and make changes, all right, uh, that's necessary. And then uh, from there, uh, the online generates their reports that they want to use. <clears throat> now, in ours, instead of calling them Advisors are called coaches, okay? Um, it's based upon, um, uh, for those of you that take adult learning theory and things of that nature, the Andrew Gozerger model where basically everything, we're not actually instructors, we're facilitators, counselors, and coaches kind of thing. And so the advisors are coaches, all right? They provide encouragement, they provide some direction, but for the most part, your students need to be self-directed, okay? And the CBE model is based upon self-directed students. If you're, if you, and you will know when you have a student, it's a needy student, what I call a needy student. They constantly email you about what to do and how to do it and why, why we're doing it, okay? Those aren't those, th those that should be in the coaching model, okay? Those should be in your classroom where you've got hands-on and you can grab them and, and, and kind of guide them where they need to be. But here it's just kind of, I'm not going to go through it, but it goes through uh, tier one to tier three. Uh, you want to basically, um, your tier one, your first year, they're the ones that are at, at risk. Those are the ones you kind of have to get set up. Age notwithstanding, I know you kind of say, well, the older ones, they, they should be able to do it. But when we talked about, I tell uh, other people that, you know, we live in a pedagogical society. Our education is pedagogical. So I don't care if your student graduated from high school in 1958, 78, 98, or 2008, they're still part of the same pedagogical model. It does not make any difference. Subjects are maybe a little different, okay, but for the most part, they're still um, uh, under that model. 
So when we get students, this is how the case management, when they, Jessica does, she's our kind of like a missions person. Um, they take those students and they do some intake. They basically talk to the student. They have, <clears throat> for the most part, they need to come in and see her. Okay, no phone calls, they want to see them. All right, and they go through and she has a special intake form that she's developed and they go through all the different things like for one thing, they need to have access to a computer. And that does not mean at the library. That means at home. So they have to have a PC or a laptop, and they have to have internet. If they don't, they do not use the program. Okay? I know it seems kind of tough, and they go, well, what about your inner city kids that do not have that access? And... Um, all I, all I tell, tell everybody is you got to draw a line somewhere. In Dayton, if you have a two-hour test, you're only allowed on those PCs in the library for an hour. So how is that person going to finish that two-hour test? They can't. So they flunk the class. So what have, you, what, what have you served? Okay. So that's the kind of the approach that we're taking. All right. And then after they've done the intake, then they're assigned a coach, all right? And the coaches, basically, that we have three coaches, and it's round robin, okay? And they're assigned on a one-to-one -one basis. The coaches do check-ins, and they check on them. This is where instructors need to be communicating with the coaches. I mean, if you have a problem, the coaches need to know about it because sometimes the student will tell you, sometimes the student will tell the coach. And if you don't get those two-way communications going, you're not going to know anything. And it, you're going to have some fall through the crack. All right? But those are the ones uh, having that communication with the coach. All right? Um, and then um, if... Uh, during the case management, any referrals, resource, liaison, anything they need, all right, because they're going to need tutoring. Well, they're online, they're CBU. How are they going to get this? So basically, um, you need to find some access to some other resources. Um, what I'm doing is developing my own YouTube library for those students, slowly putting in YouTube, putting, in a site, putting things in, so that way I can provide them more access material than they could than they could want. Granted, it's not a one-to-one -one basis, but it's kind of the best you can do. Here just kind of shows you how we progressed um, from full-time to central oversight. Uh, one master course delivered in multimodality, which means the Cisco material that I teach classroom is the same as I teach online, is the same as the CBE. All right? Now, you can't, that is the core material that you want to cover based upon your outcomes and objectives. <clears throat> if there's other areas that you want to hit upon the classroom, feel free. For example, in the classroom, I provide students multi-vendor support, so they basically can work well on other equipment. Okay, that I cannot provide them through CBE and or online. So they're still meeting the, the uh, 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 outcomes and objectives. They're just getting it in a more multi-vendor approach. That's the only difference. And yes, Cisco does not like sharing it, but you know what? The same, I went to a Cisco advisor, uh, our little academy meetings that we have, and the other, uh, some other places they kind of like, um, don't care for it. But um, I tell them that this is based upon our meetings, and there are only two companies in our area that even have any Cisco equipment. So, you know, you have to, what, what are the other companies using? They're not using Cisco, you know. And it just goes through. It's open capacity, which means we don't, there's not a limited, like in classroom, if you only have 20 chairs, that's all you can have. But online, it can go uh, as, as large as you want. And then we have one person that manages the out of area students because our uh, final exam is proctored. That means for, if you have the final exam, it must be proctored. 
It means they have to go to a pro area and have it proctored where they are being watched and maintained. Okay? Yes? So are you using the Cisco curriculum? Well, I use the Cisco curriculum, and then the final exam has to be done at the Cisco Sinclair Testing Center or a approved testing site based upon, we have a person that manages the out of areas, because I got a person in Cleveland, I got one in Indiana, so they're not gonna drive to Dayton, Ohio to take a test, so they've got it approved. The one caution I'm gonna give you, if some place is charging them 50 bucks to proctor that exam, it's, the, it's on the student. Sinclair does not reimburse them for the proctoring fee, and that's what a lot of places are doing now, okay? All right, so. Okay. So here's probably the same thing that you, our goal was to adopt competence-based IT instructions to accelerate learning for uh, tech ads eligible students, veterans, unemployed, and other adult learners, okay? We wanted it more business, but to basically add people to the roles, we had to add the unemployed and, uh, and adult learners, okay, to that task. Reason is, is we, uh, associated with what they call uh, uh, the state of Ohio Jobs and Family Center, which is the, uh, where the employment, the welfare, child care, all that's taken care of. And then these are the other colleges that we worked with. Um, Mathematica does, I don't, uh, they come in, the feds, you know, they want their paperwork and they came in, Mathematica, they are there now um, and I met with them, and they'll go through each course and go through and see what's going through and tabulate the reports and then send, send help and then work with the, we'll work with you, Gretchen, on getting that uh, information sent. We worked with Broward County and Austin Community College. We handled some of the web and development. We handled the software development um, and the network engineering and network managing system. And Austin Community College also did some uh, Microsoft. Broward just did uh, A+. Plus. Okay. So here just shows you some of the things, the, uh, the CNS program for uh, network security. There's the Network Engineering Associate Certificate for the Cisco. Here's the Fast Track Programming Associate, and then the Microsoft Certified Solutions Associate, and all of the different areas. So we basically show the course, everybody takes Net Plus, basic networking, and then they go into their track, and then we require Security Plus. Why? Because our advisors through our built meetings said they wanted it. Okay? And then, if they're getting a degree or if they're doing a certificate, then we have general ed, and we're basically we're building that right now. Almost all, they can do all of this online, okay? The only drawback is, is math, because our math instructors are pencil paper guys. There is my math lab, but that, that's good practice. But they want them in a chair with a pencil, a non, uh, what do they call it? A, uh, non-graphic calculator, all right, and three pieces of paper with questions on it, and they want it filled out. So that is the only time, <laughs> and they have to do that four times a semester, okay, for their algebra and their statistics. And statistics is the one that kicks their butt. Oh. And then internships. This is the part that we're having problems with the CV because it's kind of hard to gather information when you don't see them, all right? Our, we have developed a good internship program where about half of our students going to the internship program are being hired by those groups or companies. So basically, we're having some great success with the internships. And it's helped provide members to our, uh, our built committee. So it's really working out well. We have an internship coordinator and that's all she does. She develops internships, she goes and tracks them, works with the employers, makes sure the students are, are there, 
make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So her and uh, a couple, uh, she has a administrative assistant that helps her and they're doing a super job. But the CBE portion, we have not been able to integrate that into yet. We need to, but it's just tough when they're scattered all about and you're trying to provide, uh, trying to get them there, all right? The only time we excuse the intern, if you're already working, we have a few students that basically are taking this because they're already working, all right? So basically, yeah, they don't need an internship. They already got a job. They don't need to be doing an internship somewhere else, okay? So that was, that's the only exception. There's our definition. Uh, they're all, uh, competencies are packaged into courses and they're packaged into topics and modules and students demonstrate mastery of skills. So traditional, you have a start and end date, you have a schedule, you have your gen eds that your state requires that you uh, have in all of your courses. You have your weekly lessons. Um, um, it's instructor led and central student services. So everything's centered around at the, at the classroom, of course. You know. CBE is flexible starts, not flexible ends, flexible starts. Everything still ends at the semester, whatever your semester date is. They master competencies to progress. So they cannot move to topic one or topic two till they, to, till they master topic one, all right? And you can set up your LMS so they cannot see anything in topic two so they master topic one. All right. So when they look at their LMS, all they see is topic one. They don't know how many other topics they are. They know, they kind of know what we do is they see the topics, how many they got to go. They see the introduction of objectives and the learning activities, but they do not see the assignments until they master them as they progress. Okay, and we, I can show everybody later on how mapping and, and competencies. Uh, they're modularized into units, okay? You can call them topics, you can call them units, however you want to call them. It does not make any difference. Whatever word you want to use. Uh, they have to, uh, competencies, and we are considered mentors. Why? Because it's not in instructor-led, we're not, it's not instructor center. Like here, I'm leading this whole thing. Well, in CBE, you know, I'm there if I need be. I was telling Gretchen, you know, there's about half the students I don't hear anything about. They go, for, go through fine. I don't hear a peep from them. Uh, occasionally you get a thing at the end, thanks for being there and providing me instructions. And, you know, I sometimes feel sarcastic and say, well, you know, you're welcome. I didn't do anything, but I'm glad you learned. I'm glad everything went well for you. I mean, you just don't hear a peep out of them. The drawback is, what happens if that person wants a letter of recommendation? They did so great in your courses. You took four of them, got all A's, did a great job. How do you recommend them? If I passed them on the street, I wouldn't know them. So how do you? And they're managed by academic coaches instead of advisors. So we, call, we basically built, built uh, our IT accelerator at college within a college. It's basically kind of like its own sub-entity. We basically used our existing departments. We didn't create nothing. We just used existing courses and existing departments with existing faculty members to uh, create. Okay. And then you fit them to basically end uh, based on semesters. Then you have your workforce, your curriculum, program delivery, and student support. You still have to have all those. Here just kind of gives you a nice graphic model. You, uh, your programs, they're, how they're delivered, the students, the faculty facilitation, and the holistic case management through the coaches. And then we have like a database manager who uh, uh, feeds and sends data so they can have these nice little pretty graphs on uh, student success and uh, everything else. And then they go to the internship, job promotion, or transfer, okay? In the background, we have our business. Uh, there's your built. Any strategic partners that you have, which for us would be Broward and, uh, 
and uh, Austin Community College, plus anything, anybody else that you're working with. Uh, advisory committee, we don't have, we have built, we're not advisory committee, and then any workforce agencies that you have, okay? The thing that is being pushed in the state of Ohio is that we've had to really start working on this is the, what about those students with uh, criminal records? Okay, there's a big push on requiring businesses to hire them, even though, okay, you know, I, I use the old adage, you know, I robbed a quickie mark 20 years ago, so I'll be punished for that. Well, under the advanced security, uh, you know, you know, you're not going to be hired, okay, because it's going to come there. you got a criminal record, okay? Uh, should that be uh, permitted or not? And that's a big debate that we've been talking about at our built meetings, okay? All right. And for IT staff, you know, I'm basically saying if we're going to follow this, then I, you know, I told Scott, who's our IT director, and David Krasowski, and somebody else says, so, you know, we provided an internship for somebody with a criminal record. If you want to put some teeth behind this to show to the other leaders, then you need to, if this person's qualified, you need to hire this person then. And it was just like, Ooh. I could just see the security officer going, oh gosh, you know, I, I see my house disappearing. <laughs> but that's, that's what we're running into. That's something that, and they did put them on, I think they worked it around, I think they put them on a 180 day contract. So they did bring them in there and they're slowly building in there. So they did hire him, because he is good. He just happened to, I think he, uh, when 7-Elevens were back, he, he, he was like 28. So, so he, he basically robbed the place, you know, okay. And served, I think, four, three, two or three years in, in you know, state, state penitentiary, so, you know. But um, that, and, and you know there's a grant that's called uh, 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 the Redult Reentry through the Department of Labor. That's another grant that, it, that we do. Do you guys, do we, does IT go out to the different uh, prisons and reformatories to, uh, to, it, to teach classes? Okay, we, yeah, we're, that's becoming more and more because um, we have one outside of Dayton. Um, we go to Lebanon uh, to teach the men. We go to Dayton to teach the women. So we have actually faculty members that uh, are cleared and we go out there and teach courses, you know, to those. So, and the state pays for all that. And it's, according to the college, it's, they get, they make good money off of it. So, I didn't know if you got doing that, but I know that's kind of being pushed, and that's being pushed by Department of Labor. So, I don't know if you'll be tasked with that, but someone will be for Kansas, I mean, So basically, this is just showing our workforce. Basically, it all centers in here, this internship right here. Internships and jobs, all right? What I'm finding for the jobs is all my students are on LinkedIn, okay? And I didn't know how successful this would be because I had a Facebook page, I got a Twitter page, and we kind of communicate there, you know. I use Hootsuite and can manage it pretty easy, and I put everybody on LinkedIn. I didn't know how successful it would be. Well, I had a student that finished his first Cisco class, and he got a job in San Antonio as a network assistant, and his skill was because he knew how to put wire into conduit, and they're going to pay him almost $50,000 a year. And he said, should I finish my degree or go down there? And I said, do you need a ride to the airport? <laughs> and he's down there working. I said, if you have time, you can do this stuff online. There's a perfectly good community colleges down in Texas. I can let you know which ones are Cisco Academies, and you can hook up down there. But I'm having students leave after first semester, second semester, third semester. They're not finishing the course because they're that desperate. And they're going at all kinds of, because with LinkedIn, I'm, like I tell my students, I'm linked to people I don't even know. You know, because I know I know you who knows someone else who knows someone else and you know that it just goes all over the place. So 
Um, um, so it, that has been the most successful thing, and it, it was nothing I planned. I didn't plan this. I just thought it would be good because of, you know, they could get, you know, resources and see what other professionals. But um, I got um, the uh, dean of the college came to me and says, because I'm having about half of my students not finishing the four-year exam. She usually says, what's going on here? Half your students? I said, they're leaving with jobs. And I listened to my theory. She goes, well, they can't be. They're not certified. I'm like, they don't care. <laughs> they need a warm, intelligent body. Okay? Plus, I just read in ZDNet magazine that businesses want associate's degrees more than they want certifications. So we've kind of flipped again. And then you got others that just need a warm, intelligent body. Whether you got a degree or you don't have a degree, the only th thing I tell the students is, you know, having a degree does provide you some advancement. So somewhere along the line, you're going to have to get something. Okay. Plus, what happens if you're in a dead end position? Because there's a lot. I give this scenario to my uh, students. All right, I'm the I'm the new employee, and I got the six of you, and you're all upper, and you know, you're happy, you get paid well, and you have no intentions of going anywhere soon. What advancement do I have? None. I'm stuck. So, what are my options? Sit here and do the same job year after year after year after year, waiting for one of you to leave or die, or go elsewhere. And that's what I kind of tell my students. So when you have to go elsewhere, then, you have to show how confident you are. Yeah, you've worked for this company, but I've been outside. When you leave a company, they're not very happy because you're taking a lot of experience and knowledge out that door, okay? So if you're doing it for advancement, they're gonna try to say, well, is it more money? Can we, do you need more money? If it's not more money, you just, because of there's no advancement, and they're, they basically, okay, well, just get out. You know, it's kind of like, I'm just, I'm, I tell students, that's basically what it is. I've worked in, on the outside, you know, they're not happy. So don't ask for a letter of recommendation. Oh, by the way, can you give me a letter of recommendation? I'm like, mm hmm yeah. I'll get right on it. And it never happens. So kind of tell students that. If you have some certifications that you've done and you have to pay for them out of your own pocket, and um, um, join other associations, like we got uh, Technology First, where you meet with other people, you get some training, you just kind of, it's like a networking group where you network with other those, and those are the ways to build up your resume uh, outside of getting a degree. Here just shows you some strategic um, you can kind of read through that. Um, that's more of a uh, the dean stuff that she puts in there. Okay, and our courses. The curriculum part, all right, is all built based upon the course coordinator. So as the courses that you build or implement for CBE, all right, and they can be whatever areas that you want. Okay, so I know you talked about doing the Cisco. Uh, the network engineering based on those four courses, all right? Or you can do the two courses and do the Cisco branch where they can do the security. Um, there's no more CCNA voice, that disappears. That's, that's, you probably read that. That's, Cisco's chucking that to the curb. Um, so either security or continue, continue on the CCNA. So, uh, you work with an instructional designer. An instructional designer basically helps you create the course in your learning management system. Okay? And then um, you can add other um, faculty members to that. Okay? We have adjuncts that are more qualified to, t uh, to write up stuff like on Java and programming than our full time faculty. Plus, they may have the time to do it. Okay? And they get reimbursed for it. Okay? We pay, uh, Sinclair pays. For each, for each course that I rewrote for CBE, I got 
$4,500 for each course. So that's what I was paid to rewrite it into CD format, $4,500 per course, okay? You can, and then they call it a, a supplemental agreement. And then you can share that with someone else. If you want, if you want an ad, adjunct to do it part-time, not a problem. They don't, you can pay them that amount. So that was all part of it. Um, grading. Um, what grades are you going to accept? We did 80%. And the reason we set 80% is all of us have taken, some of us have taken certification exams. What's the magic score? 800, 805, 810, 820. So that's where we got the 80. So people say, where do you come up with this 80 stuff? Well, that's basically, if you think about it, your certification exams are based upon that. So that's how we came up with the 80. So that way students know that when they have to take the certification exam, they better at least get an 80. Anything less than 80, and they're not going to get it. Plus, we require our students to pay at least half of their certifica or certification exam. We used to do it free. Didn't work. Because who cares? It ain't my ain't no money. I'll just go ahead and take it, just because Jerry told me to do I go in there and get a 47, 470. Okay, well, I took it. I'm done. I can take it. Um, yeah. Right. right. I think um, I know under Cisco you can take it within was it 48 hours or after 48 hours. I'm thinking because I had one that failed. It. He took the voucher, and he paid his what 125 dollars, and then he didn't pass. I think he missed it by. I think he got like an 805 and he needed a 820. And then, he, of course, he had to take it again. He had to pay full rate, which was $295. But he paid it and passed that time. But the voucher's only good. Now, Sinclair through CompTIA, we have 50% vouchers, okay? And I, I don't know what the policy is on how many vouchers they can get for the same exam. I know that they can get at least two. After that, they have to pay full rate because we, we can test them right there at Sinclair. I don't know if you, you guys test them here? Mm -hmm. So you buy the vouchers from CompTIA and then you... I don't think there's a sidebar vouching for any reason. They pay for it out of their own pocket. Well, what we do is we buy, we buy vouchers and it gives them half off. So like the exam's only $75 instead of 150 The only voucher method that we provide is through the community education. Yeah, we got to check on that. They, I'm not sure Okay. The Cisco, you can't, but like for if you're taking Net Plus or Microsoft or uh, Security Plus, um, you can, um, you can, um, uh, you can uh, buy the vouchers and it gives, it gives them a discount. Mm -hmm. All right. And it helps support the workforce development because it's run by workforce development and they're a for profit entity. So that money is, is, is basically. And then what they do at the end, like when you have those vouchers and they kind of expire, what they do is, you know, they start going around to the different faculty. Hey, do you need, what, what exam do you need to take? Oh, here you go. What one do you need to take? Oh, here you go. And they go around and find out who, and they give you a voucher so you can take it. And that's what we do with the extras. Because it, it, it brings in money to it brings in money to the department or to the workforce department. <clears throat> okay, and here's just the competency. So we have CCNA, we got Microsoft certification, Ohio IT standards, and then our programs. That, sorry, it's so small. Uh, Associates of Applied Science and Network Administration, Network Engineering, Software Development. And then there's some, there's some embedded certificates within those programs itself. So we all have master syllabi that we have to maintain and they're posted on the uh, website for everybody to see. And then you do a course description 
that basically goes to the advisors so they can look at and see what the course is about. And so uh, as advisors and as anybody in, uh, going on the website, they can see course descriptions, master syllabi. Uh, on, we put the course outcomes on the master syllabus. You don't have to. And then the topics are on the course description. So it lists the course and then all the different topics. It, it, so this is not like it's four documents, okay? The gen ed outcomes are based upon the state. So our state's basically gone through and redoing all the gen eds this, year, this summer. So we're gonna have to, as soon as the state board gets done, we have to go back through all our courses and update all the gen eds, which I'm looking forward to. Like I tell my students, you know, um, most of my job is paperwork and research, visiting, doing other types of stuff, being an administrator, and then on occasions, you know, in my free time I teach. And that's basically what it's coming down to. So this is what Angel was, and this is how our we initially did our organization. So it's a welcome from the instructor. Just a little bit about yourself. You can do a video. Uh, I, uh, I did videos. Learning resources, uh, there's where you can put your links where they could get to, like we talked about DreamSpark, to Veneticad.com, um, things of that nature. Net, uh, information on NetLabs, all of that's on the learning resources. Expectations of the course is just basically what we expect out of them. And then academic support services based upon federal guidelines, you know, all the things that they can have access to. And then we put in assignment checklist, what they need to do. Okay, that's usually, I always tell my students, print that out, have it lay in there so you know exact. And then you can put them in the units, you can put them in the topics, however you want to do it. Once they finish that, we kind of drew a line. Okay, now you cut, now you, here's your introduction, you've read through that. Here's what you need to do. Now here's a you made it, basically kind of giving you some information. Here's, here's what's remaining. And then you have your final assessment. It's one part, two parts. For CBE it's proctored, so they can't do it on their own, okay? We looked at doing what Western Governors is on trying to uh, purchase the software for them to download to their system and making sure they have a webcam so it watches them. And that got to be too expensive. I mean, it is very expensive. So we decided on the proctoring approach. And here is instructions on how to complete a unit-based course and just basically for what you and the instructional design put in there, all right? For ours is, you know, printer-friendly version so they can print it. Got to give them access to print, okay? A picture. And behind the picture, if it's ADA, you'll see a uh, gentleman uh, on iPhone, you know, a little paragraph on what this picture symbolizes. And you have, and there are certain rules, you have to, it's, uh, it has to be different scenarios, it has to be color photographs, it has to be diverse and, you know, all kind, all that. And then, however, the format that you want. We created templates and then the instructors then put information in on the template. And then we put the copyright. Click on next at the top right. There's a little next button. So they decide on the template to put next so they know to navigate to the next screen. And then our all, co all content is copyrighted by Sinclair. We had to put that on Angel. For D2L, all you gotta do is put it in the front. It's already cut. You don't need to put it on every page. And then the delivery. We talked about how to number it. We have a content show. All the instructors, like myself, have all the, all the students in the 800 shell. They come in different times, so that's why I say communication between you and the coach is vital. Because depending upon the system, um, how, how your system is, a student can be put in the 800 shell and you don't know about it, which is the problem that we have. So the coaches, sometimes things will flip through the crack like about a semester or so ago, a student says, well, I've been in this course two weeks and I haven't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And the coach says, Jerry, so-and-so is upset because they don't know what to do. I said, who are you talking about? Oh, well, this student. I said, well, you didn't tell me about that student. 
So there, that is the biggest issue. When you start students dropping and adding the class, the coaches, and you got to hammer on the coaches. And basically, we fired a coach because they did not let everybody know. I don't know what the coach was doing, but he didn't. And we basically, we as a faculty got the group, got to Nancy, who's the kind of the grant manager, and basically said, we need to fire this person. Because of those, it was about eight or nine of those students, and half of them failed because they just, they lost weeks because we didn't know. And the students, are, you know, if they're not self-motivated like they're supposed to be, they're just waiting for you. Well, Jerry didn't tell me to do anything. Oh, okay. They are waiting on me. So what we did was as each week they enter in, we made it 801, 802. And what this does is when you grade at the end, you will see this person's name come in the 802 section. So that grade will go in there. And then any financial aid and any is based upon the 802 section. So that's all based upon that. What I said when we were doing the, uh, um, kind of like our impromptu, depending on course, you need to decide where you want to stop it at. In the Cisco cast, bring them in at week 11, and it's only 16 weeks, it's probably not a good idea. Like I said, on the 14 lab, you got 11 quarters, you got 11 tests, 50 labs, and they go, 50 labs? You want them all? There's 75 of them. Ooh, whoa, okay, 50 is enough. Plus, you know, there's a hands-on final, there's a packet tracer final, and then there's the final exam. And we do week 16, the final week, is that's it. Okay? That's the week they take, everybody needs to have the final done. If we, after week 15, wherever you're week 15, you basically close out all the boxes. You don't accept anything. And there's a way on D2L, you close the boxes and poof, you put an end date on them and they just disappear. So ours is Sunday at midnight, so when Monday comes around, all the drop boxes are gone. So they can't submit anything. And of course, you'll get an email. Uh, well, I forgot to submit all these. And I'm like, too late. Well, I'm going to flunk the class. I'm like, you got your final exams this week. You got three of them. At 100 points a piece, that's 300 points. You're just going to blow it all that? <sighs> so. Plus, we did it so that their mind is just basically focused on getting those final, final projects done, okay? Also, at week 15, five assignments maximum per student. You can put that in there because we require our faculty a 48-hour turnover to get, turn those assignments back. Well, if you're getting 100 assignments, everybody's waiting the last minute to turn them in, there ain't no way you're going to get them done. And that happened to us. I was spending, I had, the week before the final, I had, in my courses, I graded through almost 150 labs. So the quality that I was grading was probably not all that great. Especially if you were 100, number 144 or 150. So we capped that. That way they're required to. We're fumbling around on putting milestones where they have to have certain things done and then you shut it off. We're experimenting with that. But the problem is when they're entering at different ones, it gets kind of confusing, okay? Because after a while, you're all six students. I don't know when, you, you may have come in week four, you may have come in week two, you may come in week six. I, after a while, you don't know. They're all in the 800 shell. You're just taking care of the class as it's going. You really don't know when they enter in, so that gets to be a problem. And then the student support, okay? Get it, um, working with the faculty, working with the um, uh, case uh, coaches and having the coaches available um, with them. What the coaches do is they provide, uh, they, they do different things with the database. At, they put things in red, yellow, was it red, green? So if you have a chart and all of your stuff's green, that means that student's doing well. If they're yellow, we got a caution, we got some problems here. If they're red, we got a big problem. Okay? And so 
what the, a lot of the coaches do, if anybody's in the red, they finally get to those faculty. So what do we need to do to get this person going? Okay, what do you want me to do? And that's how we kind of work with the coaches. Well, you know, you know, I haven't heard much, you know, um, from that person. Another thing is that you need to work on, and as far as the facilitation, who handles the emails? Because in in some, you know, I like to keep track, and there's a problem behind. You know, I'll send them an email. Well, some students were getting emails from the coaches and getting them from us, and it was just like they were being being babied or pestered or bothered all the time. Okay, God, I'm an adult. You know, this kind of stuff. So, you know, you got to run into that. <clears throat> what I do personally, I do a welcome. And after the first week, after about towards the end of the first week, you know, we have federal requirements where they have to at least log in. Well, we had the first week and I administratively drawed, I think, two or three people because they hadn't logged in, they didn't do anything. They didn't log in their Cisco account, they didn't log in their D2L account, so I dropped them. That way they got their money back and no record of being. And uh, so I do let them know that, hey, you need to log in and get started about usually three to four days within the week. Well, if not, you will be administratively withdrawn. So I have form letters I just basically just highlight and put them in the email and send it to them. So it's nothing, you know, they've all been approved. So all of these are form letters. And then if they've done something, I usually don't bother them until a coach comes with me and says, we got some problems with the red. Well, do you want to handle it or do you want me to handle it? And then one of us will send an email. So, you know, try not to um, send the students too much email. And here just basically just shows you another graph of the um, admit, enroll, retain, transition, and complete. And then from the complete, going out to the job, and then basically as two leave, two come in, and just keep the cycle going and going. So here just shows you admissions, enroll, retain, transition, and then complete. Uh, we have one admissions coordinator handles all this, okay? We have an orientation course they have to go through, all right? And then they take certain tests, and uh, we have them do a computer literacy course right off the bat, all right? You know, and that basically lets, them, lets us know if they have a PC. Because I can say, hey, I have a PC. All right, take this. You just need to get, when you get home tonight, do this computer literacy thing. Well, if you don't have a PC, it's going to be kind of hard to do. So basically, it teaches them what a web browser is. It's not nothing, anything. What we did was we took it from the, uh, we have some nonprofits in the library that teaches um, people about basic computing, what a web browser is, what a mouse is, what, so that's what this is. And that lets us know if they can handle the online. So we have that. Once they finish that, then we enroll them in the course. This usually takes a couple weeks. You can, I can do it in a week if the student's really motivated and get it done, but usually about two weeks. Then we enroll them, okay, and then get them registered, uh, make sure the payment is, show them where they need to get their books, things of that nature. What's nice about the Cisco class is no books. Students love that, no books. They go, well, what happens if I want to buy a book? You heard of Amazon? Yes, go to Amazon. Or enroll to Cisco Press and look out for sales until 20% off or 30% off, you know. If you want a textbook and get the companion guide, I always tell them get the companion guide. Don't buy the lab manual or a lot of the other stuff. So, um, getting them uh, set up for the books, okay, and then maintaining them, keeping them going, monitoring. They got triggered interventions to the database, um, and then um, uh, they use different. The coaches use the motivation. Uh, motivation. And then they talk about the internships. Again, we're still working on that. Transfer planning. We haven't had any students so far wanting to do the transfer, but it is on track. 
okay, if they want to go to UC, they want to go to Wright State. We include UD, even though it's a private university, because they are an entity. They're part of our built community. They actually have Cisco equipment, so, you know, they've hired some of our graduates. So, I know our college president isn't too great about how, having them there, you know, but, you know, they've hired our students. They've supported us. They provide internships. I mean, they got, um, uh, so, they're, they're part of our uh, internship. Our internship works on uh, uh, writing resumes, uh, uh, getting them acquainted with the Job Center, Jobs Ohio, uh, Monster, LinkedIn. Uh, of course, they're already on LinkedIn if they're with me, so she does all that. She's got an administrative assistant and helps them work on their resumes. We used to have a career counseling center, but because of state budget cuts, all those people were let go. Okay. They were at the December 31st was their last day. They were all laid off. So, and then what happens when they leave? Most of ours is job placement. We've only, I've only seen one or two for promotions, none for transfer to four year. And then they're constantly, the feedback, mm, you know, how many do course feedback? Do students do course feedback? All you get is they're really good and they're really bad. I always tell students, all I ever see from these feedback is I can walk on water or I suck. One of the two. I don't know anything in the middle. And they go, you're serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm serious. That's just it. You know, because you have this, would you ever take this, have this course with this instructor again? And, you, and it's one of those, you know, 10, yeah, oh, yes. You know, I'd give them a 12 or two if there was a good one on Bob 10. So, you know, you have that. So, kind of like in the middle. So, this kind of, we haven't really got a whole lot to go on so far. Plus, like I said, if you got a student that just basically is self-motivated, I was no help to them at all. I gave them a grade, well, big whoop. You didn't do anything, you know. That, that's another problem is, you know, like, okay, Jerry was no help at all. He didn't do anything. All I did was read the book, turn my assignments in, I never bothered him. I didn't email him. I didn't do it. I took my final. I got this grade. You know. Here just basically shows from the admission counselors, you know, to the coach. So basically student name, ID number. For We get a little carton card and it has their number on it. Placement, any information they want. They took the math. We have what they call... Um, if they don't have an ACT score, they take what they call the acuplacer, which bases them on their um, uh, math, reading, uh, math and reading scores. If they don't pass that, they do not get in the CBE course. Developmental courses do not count. They have to finish the de developmental courses and get those passed before they come into that portion. Okay, so that is a requirement. Okay, so if they don't meet the reading, writing, and arithmetic scores, they do not get admitted. Here shows you what they requested, CIS 1107, which is the Introduction to Operating Systems, 2014 spring. They're going to be part-time, so they're only going to take one course. If they're doing a certificate program, they're all part-time. Uh, they want to be CCNA certified so they can utilize their new skills uh, and, and other things program plans, they want to do the Network Engineering Associates uh, uh, short-term certificate through Accelerate IT. Met method of payment for most of them itself. Um, <coughs> any uh, specific intakes they have. Uh, their email for uh, there, it's mysinclair.edu. And then they have to Part of their assignment in the IT Accelerate that they have to go through is they have to put a vision statement. They have to write their vision statement. And then the coach uh, does an appointment and they basically be get, uh, build that relationship. And what they do is they got a, their own office, so it's not shared. The main advising, I mean, it's just like bringing in a herd of cattle. They get partitions, and you can hear other people. Here, it's a little glass room. Nobody else is there. Doors closed. Nobody else is allowed in. 
and it's a one-on-one. -on -one. So it's private, it's, uh, they've, uh, the offices are neatly, uh, you know, they're personable because they have pictures of, of, of significant others and, you know, their own little, they, you can tell like when one of them, one likes to go to the beach, you know, because they got the beach photos up there. One, you could see their boyfriend and, you know, she's been down in, uh, on the beaches. Another one shows that they got kids, so it's personal. So they actually come in and see, oh, this person actually has a kid. Oh, they got a kid. And, oh, wow, she's probably my age. Or, you know, something of that nature. So that's what, the, that's the initial thing that they come into. That's why they don't want phone calls. They want actually, I see you, you see me. Okay? And then they work on looking at the vision statement, going through the courses, talking to each other, trying to, uh, the coaches try to get one personal thing from them if they can. You know, something that, you know, that interests them, something personable, like they like NASCAR or they're sick of Bengal fans or whatever. You know, try to get one personal thing that they come out of there. And then they have their own format where they basically sit down and they show them the guidelines of um, what they need to take. Here's, here's for... Uh, uh, you need to take these courses the first semester, summer, fall, spring, summer, and fall. For f if it's self-pay, we basically basically push them to do the summer. Okay, if they're getting financial aid, you know that's only two semesters are paid for financial aid, so basically you have to basically eliminate the summer. So you're still getting two, four, you're still getting um, why they have six? I don't know. It's because if they're doing a degree, they're only one, two. Uh, and then depending on the summer, they only may get certain courses. We're really scaling down on the summer because there's really not, uh, we're getting less and less faculty wanting to work in the summertime. And then this is just more database stuff that they've created for coaching. Here's their coaching list, and these are all belonging to this particular coach. This is how many people they have, and they, they can click on each one and get their GPA and uh, any information that they that they have on that individual. Okay, so in case someone goes out on what they mean by seamless, in case. Um, say you have a coach that basically, we had a coach because we're getting into our end of our contract, you know, that since it's a grant funded position, they're finding another position, okay, that's full time, you know, and maybe pays a little better. So they're leaving because they know this time next year, they probably, they're going to be looking for a job. So basically now they're starting to kind of look for other positions, okay, because it is a grant funded position, all right, next summer we're done. Okay, so um, what they mean by seamless handle, all, all they got to do is the project man or uh, Jessica, who's our admissions coordinator, all they'll do is just take those groups of one person leaves, those 10 or 15, and just spread them out to the remaining ones. Okay, and no, we don't have a plan. What happens if, more, you know, the, the scary part of it is we're getting into March and we got 50 maybe 150, 200 students, and all of a sudden these coaches start leaving because they see the handwriting on the wall. Then what do we do? We haven't got to that part yet. So that's something you may want to start looking into. So what, what happened? There's no way two of them are going to handle, you know, and all those increased students. What's going to happen? So we haven't quite got, got a handle on that yet. And then here's the data I was telling you about. Here shows these students are doing well. Week two, progress at 25%. Average grades 100. Uh, no unsuccessful attempts. Risk level's low. So if they're low, that means they're doing their assignments and everything's well. Yellow means yeah, they should be at a certain percentage and they're not. Okay, they haven't turned. Red means there's a real problem there and we need to start 
uh, taking care of that. Here they're at, at week three and they've done nothing, okay? And that's the part where um, the state of Ohio is starting to uh, uh, get very angry at uh, withdrawn students, okay? We had a whole summer thing where we had to eliminate the letter W from our alphabet. Our uh, Dr. Johnson, who's our CEO and college president, said we need to eliminate the letter W from our alphabet. No withdrawals because that cuts in, any withdrawal is basically a cut in our funding. So, so that's why we kind of pushed the non-record after the first week so you don't have this week three because when you withdraw, they're still part of the college statistics and it counts negatively to the college because uh, the way our funding model is starting this year, it's 50% completion, 50% enrollment until it gets to the final stage of 25% enrollment, 75% completion. They're doing it gradually. So if people aren't getting certificates or degrees, you're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you. Because, and it's, it's, it's not right, but that's just what the states have done. Because community colleges in Ohio are only at 20% success rate as far as if you look at from the time they, the state says from the time they start, within five years, they need to have a degree. Well, some take seven, eight, nine, ten, but that's all counted against you. So 20% of our students are getting a degree within a five-year period of time. The rest of them were getting certs. They were just here for one or two classes for personal growth. So that was, that's the problem that we're running into, and, it, and they don't have an answer. And, of course, it all changes in 2018 when we get a new governor and a new and a, you know, because, you know, as I started to work at St. Clair, no matter how bad the governor is, I always want him to get reelected because I know nothing's going to change at least for eight years. And then after eight years, we have to reinvent the wheel. But we were going through a stage where we had a governor, four years, get another governor, a governor, and it was just constant. We never even got finished done with the last governor, and we had to make, start making new changes. We hadn't even finished what we had. There was never any finishing. Okay, and here's just another thing showing uh, the uh, embedded career model and what admissions, first two terms, midterm, and then final, what, they, what the coaches do. Our success, core success rate is 81%. So 81 is higher than the college. The college, I think, is around 72. Our department's 72. College is 55. Um, so medium days to course completion is 91. That's skewed because we got an 1107 class. Well, if, and everybody has to take it. So somebody really knows a lot, of, has worked with computers for a while. Well, the first thing you do, the first chapter, if you've ever taken an introduction to operating system, you learn about the PC. All right, next one you learn about malware. Third one you learn about Windows 7, and then Windows 8. Um, how to use um, what they call under the desktop, how to use the maintenance tools, um, learn about Linux, learn about Mac, learn about ping and trace route, and that's the end of the course. Well, pff, somebody has been doing that for a while, it'll take, it'll take you all but about maybe four, you could do it easily in four weeks, and that's not even busting your butt. And we have a lot of, and that's what skews the data, okay. We have a lot of students, that, quite a few students that basically whip through that course and nothing flat. The downside about that is they think all the classes are like that. <laughs> then they get reality hit them in the face. Um, we average about 10 contacts per, with students per team. That's the coaches basically just checking in with them. Okay. Um, some a little more, some a little less. 85% of the accelerated students who intern went on to be hired or promoted after internships. Okay. Um, so we're only talking maybe, there was, 
there was less than five, so that's not exactly, that's a nice, you take statistics, you know how to play with numbers, that's what we did, we played with that number, that looks good when we go out and show that today, 85% got hired. Then if you're, if you're processing, you can, then your next question, how many students did you have? Well, oh, uh, four, <laughs> five, oh, okay, all right. And then between us, we created the coaching template between faculty and coaches. Sustainability and scaling, okay. So we applied for one year. We got a one year extension because the government basically told us on September 30th, you got the grant and boom, you had all this stuff to get done. <laughs> so there was no way you could have started the ground running on October 1st. So we have until April 30th of 2016 and then it's done. What we're gonna do with those CBE courses right now is up in the air. We don't know whether they'll be continued, whether they'll be um, um, uh, dropped, will it, be co will it be a college decision, whether it would be a, uh, a dean decision or a chair decision, we do not know. I can't tell you what's gonna happen. We got faculty that like it, we got faculty that don't, okay, you know. A lot of faculty, some faculty, the reason they don't like it is, is because they say they spend too much time grading because you're just getting hit all the time. It is, the biggest adjustment I had is, okay, right now I'm in week two, okay, of our summer semester, so this is week two. Well, someone throws, you know, I'm teaching a class and doing week two stuff, I get this week four or something. Now I have to select, okay, week four. That's a, because you have to step back because you're getting them from all different directions. Now I may get a week one assignment. So as you're going through, you know, you're kind of uh, here or there. Plus, if you maintain a grade book outside the, your LMS, whether you're using your math lab, your reading lab, your uh, Pearson lab, your Cisco, uh, whatever you're using, out, you know, getting those uh, uh, grades from that, that uh, grade report to the others because you have to maintain them on LMS. I know, I always tell you, back in the day, I didn't do, mess with that grade book until the end. You, you got a final grade, I didn't even mess with that grade book. All right? And I kept everything on a spreadsheet and boom, it was up there and that's what, that's what it was. But under this, you have to basically, because they're pulling stuff, because they have access to your course as course viewers. Okay, so basically as course viewers in, in D2L, they can see all of it and they can then pull information, they can pull information down. So you have to maintain those grades. I do every Monday. Every Monday I go through the Cisco website and start transferring all the grades and all the tests and stuff on there. So I just use Monday. And the coaches know that, so they know Monday on Tuesday they can go through. I use Monday because of, it gives them the weekend to get whatever they need to get done and I can go through all my classes and boom. Because on Cisco, I have one class. If it's the semester one class, my online, my face-to-face -face and the CBE, they're all on it. So I just, I got one grade book. Download, download it to a CSV file and then just update my grade book. That's how I do it. Um, so, Ohio TechNet, we're working, the state of Ohio has accepted the CBE and they're going through and updating the, we've inputted our information for our new competencies into the state database, so we'll see what gets approved and what gets, what doesn't get approved, okay? Um, it's all by a vote, but like I was saying before, the Ohio State University uh, controls 51% of the vote. So it's a democracy, but Ohio State has 51%. So if Ohio State likes it, then it'll get on there. If they don't like it, it won't go on there. We're still looking at the rolling starts and, one, and uh, automate removal of registration re restrictions. 
We're uh, database is still automating reports because right now uh, uh, when he's generating the queries and stuff, he's not getting all, sometimes not getting all the update information. Um, fine tuning the risk indicators, okay. Um, the way it looks now is you say I have a student that did, had done a whole bunch of assignments but they haven't taken the test. So for that one module, there might be four assignments and one test. Well, that's four out of five, that's 80%. Hey, that person's doing good. You know, week two, still so might. So it's, if it's only three assignments second week, so that's four out of eight, that's 50%. That's still pretty good. Yet they haven't taken any of the chapter tests, so that's not good. So you got those little problems that are running into. And um, working with the career communities, our built teams. Okay. This is our website that we have for our, uh, that we send out, and then we always put our uh, web address. I'll have business cards I can, I'll lay out here, so if you want one. Um, so are there any questions uh, as we were going through the slides, there's anything that you really wanted to have information on or wanted me to cover later, uh, write that down and, and um, I just give them to Gretchen and that way we can kind of build upon that because I just wanted to go through a brief overview and then if there's certain things that you want to hear about, then that's what we can build upon. That's what, because I was telling you, when Western governors came in, they were just telling us all about this for profit and paying by the month. I'm like, okay, that's not all nice and good, but we could, we're a state college, we can't have, we don't do that. And talking about, um, we have instructors that do nothing more than grading, that's all they do. Well, we don't have that, you know. So they were going through all this big scenario, and I spent a whole day sitting there, got a free lunch, but I didn't get anything out of it. So I've seen a lot of pretty show slides and, you know, met some lady down in Florida on Google Hangout. Other than that, great day. Any questions anybody have? Okay. Well, Jerry, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Great overview. Appreciate it. Oh, not a problem.